example, I'll be performing a stress life analysis using rainfall cycle counting. You'll find instructions and details about this example in the video description below. This is actually a continuation from the previous example of the keyhole specimen. So a lot of what I'll show you right now is uh, essentially the same. Let's go ahead and uh, start Patron, or even before that. Um, in the video description, you'll find a link to a zip file. Make sure you have that zip file available and extract it somewhere to, say, your desktop. Inside of the zip file are two files, a Natron input file, a .dat file, and a .dac file. You'll be needing these uh, as we do the example. So here we have Patron open. Let's go ahead and create a new Patron database in the same folder as those two files. So here it's a TRF count v. I'll simply call this one model. Once Patron is up, I'll import the Natron model. I get a summary as before, and then I see the model here in the back. If we turn on the model tree, essentially everything's the same. Um, if we open up the materials, or rather if we open up and show the properties for the only material we have, uh, we see that there's a linear elastic and a stress uh, life constitutive model defined. If we inspect the values here, we'll notice there's one value that's off, and that is the stress range intercept. You'll notice it's missing an 8 on the front. So let's go ahead and cancel that and actually modify that so we correct that uh, mistake. If you recall in the previous example, we actually have to type in every value here manually, but here it's already been done for us uh, for the most part. So once you correct this uh, issue, click OK and click Apply to remedy it. Once done, let's jump over to our Analysis tab and click Entire Model. Here, add an extra one here, so then it becomes RF count V1. Under Solution Type, select Linear Static. Under Solution Parameters, under Fatigue Properties, make sure we've selected Stress Life. And as before, everything's um, left as defaults. Again, make sure you check on Run SN Analysis. Click OK here. Under Results Output Format, check on OP2 and click all these uh, open forms. Next, let's open the subcases. Here, we're not interested in the default subcase. We're just interested in uh, untitled SC1 subcase. Um, once you select that, it should have automatically uh, selected this load case too. Click Output Results, and then scroll down, click Fatigue Live to put it here in the Output Results. If you want to delete it, click Delete, and just click on any ones you might want to add. But here we're just focused on the stress and the fatigue. Hit OK and click Apply to confirm the change. It'll ask me if I want to, if I'm sure I want to confirm the overwrite, and click Yes. The overwrite happens, click cancel. Under subcase select, make sure we've gone ahead and uh, selected untitled SC1. And click default one to remove it from the list here. Click on define fatigue load sequences, and here's where we create our one event. Select the subcase untitled SC1, and here at the DAC file that we had in our original folder, that's where you would select it at this point. Our load magnitude per the instructions or, or is 10,000 and hit enter to make sure it gets entered into this cell. Add a new load sequence. For this load sequence, add a new event and select this event one, which we've just created here. Select event one, hit apply, and now we see a new event here. Hit okay here, okay here, and go ahead and apply to run this analysis. Once done, we'll go ahead and attach our OP2 file. So in, under the Analysis tab, click Attach Output 2. Uh, before, we, we just went ahead and manually pointed it to the Resolve file. But we're, since we're working in the same folder, it knows by default to find the OP2 with the same job name. So we can easily click Apply, and it'll automatically find the OP2 with the, this job name. Let's jump over to results and um, click on cursor under result plots. And here, click um, 
RF count, V1, and so on. Click on log of damage for now. Here, let's select the scalar, cursor scalar, and hit apply. Or rather, that's not the one I actually wanted to select. Uh, what I wanted to select was marker, action object marker. You'll notice that uh, I don't believe marker is listed up here. It's uh, one of those few ones that is tucked away here in the uh, pull down menu. So create marker vector. Instead of vector, let's use scalar. RF count, log of damage, and hit apply. You notice there's a lot of information here listed, so let's turn some of this information off. Right now, we've jumped into this hole known as uh, select results. Let's jump into the hole known as display attributes. Here's where we could change the marker from these triangles to actual uh, whole, or ra rather dots. Hit apply and you see the update. If you want to change the size under scalar factory, change that to say 0.3 or 0.03. And you notice they're a lot smaller. Right now, every point of data has a scalar value or scalar label. You can uncheck that and hit apply. And here you have it, a cleaner uh, view of the results. And right now, I'll zoom in to this particular location because I know that, um, uh, or rather, let me select the right result. And here I've selected the log of life repeats, that's the correct one. And now, once I've selected this result case and the scalar result, I see that the lowest value is 5.28, and that's if I look at the entire model, I know that it's uh, approximately 30 everywhere else, but the smallest life is here at the at node 1, essentially. And if we jump back to all uh, the results, zoom in here we see that a uh, node element one grid id one we see that we have a log life of repeats of uh, 5.275 or 5.3 and um, that's what we have here back in patron and that's how you would go ahead and perform this example in patron